All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here we are in the last segment of uh, our unit on meiosis. And what I'd like to do is just tie everything together to uh, let you see how uh, the amount of DNA and number of chromosomes changes uh, during the cell cycle. This is done in particular to help you answer one of the um, self-quiz questions at the end of the chapter and help set you up for some questions uh, that you'll see on the quiz and test. So let's look at um, the individual cycles. Uh, we'll begin with uh, interphase. Specifically uh, G1 of interphase. Now I'd like to create a visual for this. Uh, what we'll do is look at uh, a germ cell. Now, uh, this germ cell will have two copies of a chromosome. So here we have two homologous chromosomes uh, in the germ cell. Now, uh, this cell will undergo S phase. So we'll draw in uh, what happens or what we'll see after S phase, okay? Uh, and what we notice is that you go from these two unreplicated chromosomes to two replicated chromosomes. Remember, to synthesize means to create, so you're creating uh, copies of that genetic information. Now, let's track uh, the uh, number of chromosomes that we see uh, thus far. So in interphase, we have two chromosomes. Now after S phase, how many do we have? Well, we still have two chromosomes. So you simply have replicated this. Uh, you have two chromosomes, uh, each chromosome made of two sister chromatids. Now when we look at the amount of DNA though, that's going to change. So let's put this as X. There's X amount of DNA. But after S phase, you've copied everything. So now we've got twice that amount or two times the amount of DNA, or 2x. Well, let's uh, move on to meiosis now. Now, um, during meiosis one, we're gonna take these uh, two cells, so there's meiosis one, and we're gonna separate these homologous chromosomes. Uh, when we've done that, uh, let's see, here you have two chromosomes in each cell. Um, after, put emphasis on after. After meiosis one, what do we wind up with? Uh, we go from two chromosomes in a cell to now just one chromosome made of two sister chromatids in each cell. Uh, additionally, what have we done to the amount of DNA? We had two times the amount of DNA, but we cut that in half, so now we're bound to X, the same quantity of DNA as we had uh, in the original cell. So let's uh, go through meiosis two now. And separate these sister chromatids. So now after meiosis two, we wind up with four haploid gametes, yay, we've got the gametes, we have the egg and sperm, and we're ready for fertilization. Now, after, and again, emphasis on after, after meiosis two, what do we have? Well, how many chromosomes do we have in each cell? We're still down to just one chromosome, and then we've taken this original amount of DNA, and we've cut that in half, so now we're down to 0.4 five X. You have half the original amount of DNA as you did uh, in your original cell. So we think of what meiosis accomplishes. Uh, with meiosis, we reduce the amount of DNA or number of chromosomes in cells, uh, and we do that while dividing the original germ cell into uh, multiple gametes. So uh, pay, pay uh, attention to this, spend a little time uh, reviewing uh, the relationship between the number of chromosomes and the amount of DNA as cells progress uh, through uh, their cycle. Now, uh, to summarize everything, for life to continue, organisms are going to have to be able to reproduce. Now, asexually, this can be accomplished with one parent producing identical offspring or clones. Uh, through sexual reproduction, you have two parents creating unique offspring, 
Uh, now this process m must have uh, an alternation between diploid and haploid phases of the life cycle or sexual life cycle to maintain the appropriate number of chromosomes between generations. Uh, now, this is accomplished through the process of meiosis. Now, with meiosis, again, cells are going to go through two rounds of cell division, resulting in four unique haploid gametes. Now, due to uh, independent assortment, crossing over, and random fertilization, offspring are assured of receiving a unique combination of genes and therefore traits uh, that, in turn, impart certain offspring with uh, advantages in particular environments. So by creating uh, these unique organisms, we're helping create uh, variation in populations that helps ensure that not only does the uh, population uh, continue, it can adapt to uh, an ever-changing world. So um, please make sure you've uh, taken notes and uh, you bring into class uh, some questions uh, that you have uh, from these notes so we can make sure everyone is uh, understanding uh, the big ideas related to meiosis. And um, I look forward to seeing you all in class and happy studying.